Maigovanen. The inverse trig integrals have returned this holiday season, and today we have a really nice one. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of arc sine x times arc cosine x over x dx. And we'll begin by invoking this really nice relationship between the inverse sine and cosine functions. That is arc cosine x equals pi over 2 minus arc sine x, which means that the integral i can be expanded as the integral from 0 to 1 of arc sine x over x times pi over 2 minus arc sine x dx. We can simplify the integrand as pi over 2 times arc sine x over x, terribly sorry about that, minus arc sine x squared over x dx. Okay, cool. So we have a couple of nice looking integrals that we can get by, that we can see by first invoking the linearity of the integration operator. So we have integral arc sine x over x dx minus integral 0 to 1 arc sine x squared over x dx. And we could now invoke a nice substitution here by letting arc sine x equal theta, which implies that x here equals sine theta, and of course dx equals cosine theta d theta. And as x approaches 0, we see that theta will approach 0 as well, and as x approaches 1, we have theta approaching pi over 2. So i here now equals pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of theta over sine theta times cosine theta d theta. And we have another integral, of course, that is minus integral 0 to 1 of theta squared over, again, sine theta times, again, cosine theta d theta. We know that cosine over sine is, of course, cotangent, so we have pi over 2 integral 0 to pi over 2 theta times cotangent theta d theta minus integral 0 to 1 theta squared times cotangent theta d theta. And, of course, we know exactly what the cotangent is. That is the derivative of log sine theta. So we'll write this thing as pi over 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of theta d log sine theta minus integral 0 to 1 theta squared d log sine theta again. Okay, cool. So on integration by parts, we have pi over 2 times this thing over here, which is theta times log sine theta, limits being 0 and 1 minus the integral from, oh, pi over 2, that is terribly, sorry about that, integral 0 to pi over 2. The derivative of theta with respect to theta is, of course, 1, so we're left with log sine theta, that's one of Euler's famous log trig, log trig integrals, minus we have theta squared log sine theta, again, the limits are 0 and pi over 2, two negatives cancelling out, we have a plus sign, integral 0 to pi over 2, 2 theta here on differentiating log sine theta d theta. Now it's pretty easy to verify that this thing and this thing both crash to 0 in both limits, so let me just cross them out for evaluating out to 0. And we have this integral here, which is <coughs> one of Euler's famous log trig integrals that sorts out to minus pi over 2 log 2. So we have the two negative signs cancelling out and a pi over 2 outside, implying that i here equals uh, pi squared over 4 times log 2. And we're left with twice this integral here that I'm going to call i sub 1, which is, of course, our next target. And to evaluate this integral, we're going to make use of one of my favorite tools, and that is the series expansion for log sine theta, which is negative log 2 minus the sum over k from 1 to infinity of cosine 2k theta over k. Okay, cool. So all we need to do is multiply the whole thing by theta, and we have these terms on the right hand side, sum over k from 1 to infinity of theta cosine 
2k theta over k. And we'll integrate this thing from 0 to pi over 2 to get the target integral i sub 1 in this case. The first integral sorts out to negative log 2 times theta squared over 2 with these limits evaluating out to pi squared over 4 times 1 half. So we have pi squared over 8 minus, now I'm going to switch up the summation and integration operators to get the sum of 1 over k times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of theta times cosine 2k theta d theta, which is, of course, straightforward using integration by parts. So we have minus pi squared over 8 log 2 minus the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k times theta sine 2k theta over 2k limits are 0 and pi over 2 minus 1 over 2k integral 0 to pi over 2 of what exactly we're left with sine 2k theta since the derivative of theta is, well, 1 with respect to theta, that is. Okay, cool. So as theta approaches 0, we get a 0, and as theta approaches pi over 2, we have sine of k times pi, which is always 0, meaning that we have negative pi squared over 8, log 2, minus 1 half times the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k squared, times this integral, which sorts out to cosine 2k theta over 2k, with the limits being pi over 2 and 0, to account for that negative sign. And wait a second, I had a couple negatives here. There you go. Perfect. Okay, cool. So we have negative pi squared over 8 times log 2 plus 1 quarter, terribly sorry about that, sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k cubed times what exactly? Well, cosine of 0 is 1, and we have cosine of k times pi. And cosine of k pi is, in fact, negative 1 to the k. And this thing is positive 1 for k equal to 2n, n being a positive integer. So for all even k, we have this term evaluating out to 0, meaning that the only values of k we're interested in are k being odd, as in this case 2n minus 1, where n is a positive integer. So i sub 1 equals negative pi squared over 8, terribly sorry about that, log 2 plus 1 quarter of the sum over n from 1 to infinity, of 1 over 2n minus 1 cubed times 1 minus negative 1, which is, of course, 2. And we have some cancellation with the factor of 4 over here. Okay, cool. So we have something on the right-hand side that resembles zeta 3, or Apery's constant. And the question is, how much of Apery's constant is this thing? Well... Recall that zeta 3 equals the sum over k from 1 to infinity of 1 over k cubed. And we can decompose this thing over even odd values of k. So we have the sum over n from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n cubed plus the sum over n from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n minus 1 cubed which is our target sum that we'll call s. And this thing over here is just one eighth of the sum over n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed, which is one eighth of zeta 3. So we have zeta 3 on the left and one eighth of it on the right plus something, which means that something would be the other 7 eighths of zeta 3, which looks pretty dope. And now to plug this into our result, we have i sub 1 being equal to minus pi squared over 8 log 2 plus 7 sixteenths of zeta 3, 
but the target integral i equaled, well, pi squared over 4 times log 2 plus 2 times the integral i sub 1, which means that this thing will cancel with this thing after being multiplied by 2 anyway. So this implies that i here is just another version of Apery's constant. It's 7 eighths of Apery's constant to be precise. Why can I get this? I cannot get this correct. And there, that looks awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.